Many people have come here to say Greetings to you all. My name is Willy Wonka. He doesn't hesitate to challenge traditional masculinity and takes on provocative roles. He criticizes social media, appears embarrassed in interviews, and captivates the public with his red carpet appearances. Timothy Chalamet is an actor who rapidly rose to fame, recognized for his artistic merit and has won the affection of millions of fans. What's the secret to his success? Why does he shun fame? And with whom has he had affairs on set? Welcome to the Famous People channel. We're about to begin. Timothy Chalamet, real name Timothy Hal Chalamet, was born on December 27, 1995, in New York. Hell's Kitchen, also known as the Clinton area, once a crime-ridden district, was gradually becoming a hub of culture and fashion, shaping the worldview of the young boy. The future actor's father, Marc Chalamet, a Frenchman, worked as an editor and translator for the French office of UNICEF, and his mother, Nicole Flender, an American of Jewish descent, was a Broadway dancer. She was the one who taught the future star to play the piano and constantly encouraged him to practice. The family was affluent and lived in the luxurious Manhattan Plaza complex in the heart of New York. I am a child of the world, the star shyly smiles when asked to talk about his heritage. It combines French, Jewish, and American origins, the desire for individualism and self-improvement with tradition, the urge to express oneself and identity. I have always felt. American customs and models were closer to me. And then, as I grew up, I allowed my French side to emerge more, the actor says. In addition, Timothy's family is filled with creative individuals. I was destined to become an artist, he jokes. And for good reason. Timothy's maternal uncle, Rodman Flender, is a director and actor, his aunt, Amy Lippman, is a screenwriter, as well as his maternal grandfather, Harold Flender, who wrote the historical novel Rescue in Denmark about the persecution of Jews by the Nazi regime. This boy had a particularly close relationship with his grandparents, and his summers were spent in a small village in France called Chambon sur Lignan, a place with a lifestyle entirely different from his everyday life in New York. From his grandparents, he learned, thanks to them, I dared to dream, was not afraid to take risks, ready to plunge into the unknown, and when necessary, stop or go with the flow. Timothy Chalamet shares, my grandparents accepted me in different ways, and this helped me trust myself and feel unique. His parents discovered his acting talent and began to support him in pursuing the arts. This led to him appearing in commercials, though initially, he did not enjoy it. Timothy recalls that at the time, he didn't take acting seriously, I was very young, he says, I just stood and smiled in front of the camera, not really caring about what was happening. Timothy Chalamet also had a passion for soccer, a love nurtured during summer vacations with his grandparents. He once harbored dreams of becoming a professional soccer player. Even at 13, he spent his summer in France training younger boys. But everything changed completely after he watched Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight in 2008. What really changed Timothy's perspective was Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker. He was so captivated and astonished that he gained a deeper understanding of acting, an art form he hadn't previously taken seriously. Timothy realized that acting was more than just doing commercials with simple scripts. Something stirred within me, came alive. I loved playing soccer, but this was the first time I felt something like this," Chalamet said. He began to see acting as a true art form, a creative journey he wanted to pursue. Timothy's parents supported his career choice. They didn't just accept his decision but also attended every film he acted in and his movie premieres. This support was the most valuable thing Timothy received from his family, and he was very grateful to them for it. By the way, which of Chalamet's roles do you like the most? Write your opinion in the comments below. At 13, Timothy enrolled in the Fiorello H. LaGuardia High School of Music and Art and Performing Arts in New York, which has produced many big names like Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Jennifer Aniston, and Sarah Paulson. 
Gaining admission to this school was no easy task, with a rigorous selection process and high standards. Each candidate, including Timothy, had to pass two stringent rounds of auditions. Although he was not successful in the first preliminary round due to insufficient grades at his previous school, he still kept the opportunity to participate in the second audition round. This became a turning point as Timothy proved his true talent. His audition was so impressive that the acting teacher, Harry Schiffman, decided he had to support Timothy fully, to not miss out on such a talent. As a result, Timothy achieved an unprecedentedly high score in the history of the school's audition process, enough for him to be admitted to Fiorello LaGuardia, a significant step forward on his artistic journey. Harry Schiffman, recognizing the exceptional talent of Timothy Chalamet, requested the school to make an exception for the young boy. This decision shaped Chalamet's future in the arts. During his time at LaGuardia, Timothy unexpectedly discovered a passion for hip-hop and his own rap abilities. He tried his hand in the music industry under the stage name, Timmy T, and even created a statistics project in the form of a rap poem, along with a video for his musical work. Although teachers didn't highly rate this creative endeavor and gave it a low score, his classmates were very enthusiastic. That moment made Timothy realize he wasn't meant to be a musician but should pursue a career in acting. It was at that moment I decided I wasn't a musician and would be better off as an actor, he later shared. Nonetheless, the teachers at LaGuardia greatly appreciated his creativity and considered him one of the most outstanding students. Throughout his studies, Timothy realized the importance of approaching the art of acting seriously. If you study it and give it your strength and energy, then through a process of rebirth, you can experience life from an entirely different perspective, he said. This discovery completely changed his life. Timothy has participated in short films such as Clown and Butcher's Hill. These roles paved the way for him to take on guest roles in Law and Order, a significant step in his acting career. Loving Leah added another film to Chalamet's list of accomplishments. Following that was Royal Pains, a series that helped Chalamet express himself for the first time. In 2011, Timothy was introduced through his role in the teen comedy play, The Talls, on Broadway. In it, he transformed into a 12-year-old boy, exploring the aspects of sexuality. Next, from his role as Nicholas on stage, Timothy received an invitation to join the TV project, Homeland, a famous TV series, receiving countless positive reviews and prestigious Emmy Awards. In Homeland, Chalamet played the role of Finn, the vice president's son. Initially expected to appear in only one episode, his role was expanded throughout the second season of the series. Timothy devoted himself fully to this role. It was his first time tackling a serious character, and he approached it wholeheartedly, preparing meticulously, practicing, and researching the character to create a convincing performance on camera. This role not only brought Timothy his first recognition but also earned him a nomination at the Screen Actors Guild Awards in the category Outstanding Performance by an Ensemble in a Drama Series. More importantly, it caught the attention of director Luca Guadagnino, who at the time, was developing the romantic drama, Call Me By Your Name, and was actively searching for actors for the lead role. Call Me By Your Name, adapted from the novel by Andre Asiman, tells the story of the romance between a 17-year-old boy and a 24-year-old man, along with the main character's journey of growth through his experiences. In 2013, Timothy Chalamet demonstrated his exceptional acting skills during the audition for the lead role, impressing the director and being immediately accepted. Chalamet later recalled the anxious feeling in the early days of filming, fearing he might not be able to fully showcase his abilities. However, the film project only started in 2016 after a three-year wait for the budget and prioritization of other projects. During the waiting period, Chalamet took on several other roles, including a guest appearance in the TV series, Trooper, directed by Craig Gillespie in 2013. Subsequently, he played Danny Vance in the film Men, Women and Children, 
working alongside Hollywood stars such as Adam Sandler and Dean Norris under the direction of Jason Reitman, a talented director who had been nominated for an Oscar six times. Although the role was not significant, it still left an impression. However, the film was not commercially successful and did not make Chalamet as famous as expected. Undeterred, Chalamet continued to participate in the comedy, Worst Friends, although this film also did not succeed. But fortune smiled upon him when Christopher Nolan, the famous director of Dark Knight, invited Chalamet to join Interstellar, one of his most impressive film projects. I'm very excited to work with Christopher Nolan. He's my favorite director, the young actor replied in an interview. Matthew McConaughey became Timothy's colleague on set. Initially, the young actor was even at a loss for words when he first met Matthew McConaughey. Chalamet regarded McConaughey almost as a role model of a true actor, serious and captivating, so when they needed to communicate with each other, words seemed to get stuck in the young man's throat. Despite being a minor supporting role, Chalamet demonstrated high professionalism and responsibility, taking his part seriously even in the smallest details. This approach helped him shine in a memorable scene where McConaughey's character views video messages from his family. He developed a friendship with Matthew McConaughey on the film set, and they continued to stay in touch after filming. For Timothy, participating in Interstellar was a valuable experience, becoming a motivation to pursue bigger roles in the future. Following this success, Timothy decided to focus all his time and effort on his acting career, even stopping his studies. This decision was not supported by his mother and agent due to their concerns about the unstable and changing nature of fame. After receiving advice from his relatives and agent, Timothy Chalamet decided to continue his education. Despite having gained fame as a talented actor, he was reminded that today's fame could fade tomorrow. This motivated him to enroll at Columbia University, choosing to study cultural anthropology, thinking that a degree would be a good backup plan and a step towards independence. However, Chalamet couldn't give up his passion for acting. Encouragement from Matthew McConaughey and praise for his acting abilities led him to transfer to the Gallatin School of Individualized Study at NYU. Here, he could continue his studies while still engaging in acting projects. During this time, he also moved to live alone in an apartment in the Bronx, separating himself from his family. Chalamet experienced a period filled with instability and anxiety, describing the feeling as a soul-crushing worry when feeling like you have so much to give without any platform to do so. He patiently waited for opportunities to participate in projects that suited him, avoiding long-term commitments like multi-year TV contracts that could limit the development of his acting career. After Interstellar was released globally, Timothy Chalamet had high expectations for the film. He believed that after its release, he would receive a leading role in another major film. However, he was surprised and disappointed when only a small segment of his scenes was kept in the final version of the movie. Chalamet confessed that he watched the film and couldn't hold back his tears, both from being moved and disappointed because he had hoped to appear more in the film. He didn't feel betrayed by Nolan, in fact, he went to watch the film 12 times because he completely trusted the director's decision and believed that the final version of the scene with his father was logical and necessary for the film. After Interstellar, Chalamet faced financial difficulties. He continued to seek acting opportunities, sending out his details and auditioning daily. The list of films he attempted to join but was unsuccessful is long and impressive, demonstrating his relentless effort in pursuing an acting career. Timothy Chalamet continued his acting pursuit with a role in the Christmas comedy, Love the Coopers, where he played the contemplative grandson of characters portrayed by John Goodman and Diane Keaton. Although it was a small role, it provided him the opportunity to work alongside many talented actors. Following that, he appeared in The Adderall Diaries, as a young James Franco, a role not particularly prominent in terms of screen time. However, a significant turning point in Chalamet's career came with One and Two, where he took on the role of Zack, a teenager with supernatural abilities. 
His performance in this film attracted attention and received positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. Co-starring with him in this film was Kiernan Shipka, known for her role as the witch Sabrina. 1 and 2 marked an important turning point in Chalamet's career, being his first leading role in a film that garnered attention at film festivals. 2015 can be considered the real beginning year for his acting career. In 2016, Chalamet received a significant role in Miss Stevens, where he played Billy, one of three students accompanying their teacher Stevens on a journey. This character was complex, unpredictable, and highly emotional, allowing Timothy to showcase his talent clearly. Although Miss Stevens wasn't a blockbuster hit with the public, critics were very impressed with Chalamet's performance. That same year, he also tested his skills on stage as the difficult teenager Jim in the play Prodigal Son at the Manhattan Theatre Club. This role not only brought Timothy recognition from American audiences but also his first award, the Lucille Lortel Award for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Play, marking the first time journalists called him a rising star. In 2016, Timothy Chalamet began filming Call Me By Your Name, and he had about one and a half months to prepare for the role. One of the biggest challenges was learning to play the guitar and grasping the basics of Italian. During the casting, Chalamet was asked if he could play the piano. He had played up until the age of 12, so he confidently responded that he could. After landing the role, Timothy realized he had forgotten everything he knew about the piano and had to practice daily with an Italian musician for a month. To immerse himself in the atmosphere of a small town in Italy, director Luca Guadagnino requested Timothy to arrive six weeks before filming. He spent an hour and a half each day practicing the piano and learning to play Beethoven pieces on the guitar. Timothy didn't have difficulty with French. Director Guadagnino customized the main character to suit Timothy's native and familiar language, making it easier for him to blend in and naturally portray the character. Army Hammer was chosen to act alongside Chalamet as Oliver, creating a compelling on-screen chemistry between the two actors. When they started filming, Call Me By Your Name, Timothy Chalamet and Army Hammer were strangers to each other and needed time to get acquainted. They quickly became close not only with director Luca Guadagnino but also with each other, becoming real friends. They often spent time together by having dinner, watching movies, and having extensive conversations. Guadagnino's unique approach to organizing the first meeting between the two actors was very special, he took us both to a haystack and suggested we rehearse scene 71. We flipped to the right page. The description only had one line, Elio and Oliver roll around in the grass, getting closer to each other. They began rolling around the haystack, when they stopped, the director was nowhere to be seen. This was their only rehearsal before filming. Right from the start, Guadagnino was in a hurry, he wanted to shoot their kissing scene immediately. Director Guadagnino focused on creating a friendly and serene atmosphere on set, where there was no sense of seriousness, drama, or tension. This trust allowed Chalamet to freely express his diverse talents and engage in his role as naturally as possible. In interviews, both actors often mention the warm and supportive atmosphere created by Guadagnino, helping them feel comfortable and confident during the process. After completing, Call Me By Your Name, Timothy Chalamet overcame many of his own limits, no longer apprehensive about sensitive scenes or deep monologues about emotions. Call Me By Your Name made a strong impression right from its debut at the Sundance Film Festival and then at the Berlin Film Festival. Fans and critics were highly impressed with the work of the director and the screenwriter, but especially with Timothy's performance as Elio. Chalamet's acting became a surprising highlight, exceeding all expectations. Audiences did not expect such an exceptional performance from a young and handsome actor. The most challenging part for Timothy was watching the movie with his parents, especially during the scene with the peach, which made him feel extremely embarrassed. He recalled his feelings and his father's reaction during the screening, and for me, it seemed like my father felt the same, but after the movie ended, the tension passed, 
I realized my parents were very proud and respected my choice, so I calmed down. Nonetheless, every time he eats a peach, he still remembers that scene from the movie. Following the resounding success of Call Me By Your Name, Timothy Chalamet finally gained the fame he deserved. He spent the year maintaining the sudden glow of his stardom and ensuring it didn't fade away. An Oscar nomination made Chalamet one of the youngest actors ever to receive this accolade. At the ceremony, he competed with industry heavyweights like Gary Oldman, Daniel Day-Lewis, and Denzel Washington. Although, Call Me By Your Name did not win any Oscars, Timothy didn't feel disappointed, as he learned a lot from the experience. Since, Call Me By Your Name, Timothy Chalamet has become one of the most sought-after actors in Hollywood. Each new project and experience not only further develops him as an actor but also enriches his character. Chalamet shares, the benefit of growing up is you start finding inspiration from your own experiences and from the people who care about you. He joined the cast of Hot Summer Nights in 2017, where he played Daniel, a troubled young man who decides to get involved in the drug trade with the most dangerous young criminal in Cape Cod. While Elijah Bynum's work did not receive much critical acclaim, all agreed that the film became worth watching thanks to Timothy Chalamet's performance. 2017 also saw the debut of Lady Bird, directed by Greta Gerwig. This film elevated the teen movie genre to another level with its depth and talented cast including Saoirse Ronan, Lucas Hedges, and Timothy Chalamet, who fully immersed themselves and brought their characters to life. Lady Bird was warmly received by critics and nominated for five Oscars, as well as Golden Globe and BAFTA awards. Subsequently, Chalamet had the opportunity to act alongside Christian Bale in the film Hostels, directed by Scott Cooper. In this film, Chalamet played Philippe de Jardin, a private in the army. However, in Hostels, Timothy Chalamet's role was overshadowed by other more experienced actors, and he didn't have much screen time. Similar to working with Matthew McConaughey, Chalamet initially felt intimidated by the excellence of his more experienced colleagues. He recalled, I remember he asked me to repeat my name so he could hear it clearly and remember it. My voice was choked up in my throat, really unable to come out, I thought, why, for the first time in 20 years living on this planet, my mouth is not doing what my brain wants. Despite the challenges, 2017 was a successful year for Timothy Chalamet, and he became a focal point for film studios. However, from then on, he decided to choose films that he believed were successful, rather than waiting for film studios to choose him. In 2018, Timothy Chalamet played the lead role in the biographical film Beautiful Boy, directed by Felix Van Groningen. The film continued to explore the theme of father-son relationships, with Chalamet portraying Nick, a teenager struggling with drug addiction, and Steve Carell playing his father. Timothy couldn't refuse the offer to participate in this film, not only because of his affinity for the director and co-star but also because of his emotional connection to the content. The screenplay was based on two true stories, Tweak, Growing Up on Methamphetamines, written by Nick Sheff, who himself faced addiction and became the inspiration for Timothy's character, and Beautiful Boy, written by his father, David Sheff, detailing the challenges and experiences he went through with his son. To prepare for the role, Timothy conducted thorough research, including reading David Sheff's memoir, studying statistics on substance abuse, and meeting with both David Sheff and attending Narcotics Anonymous meetings. He also had to lose a significant amount of weight to portray his character more authentically on screen. Timothy Chalamet invested both mentally and physically in this role, and making the film required a great deal of effort from him. At the film's premiere, he impressed with a unique outfit from Alexander McQueen made of fabric printed with large, vibrant red roses. Chalamet admitted that he loves fashion. His style is the result of his effort and vision, I heard about celebrities having stylists, and that blew my mind. That's definitely not why I act, but I can wear beautiful clothes from some of the most beautiful designers in the world. So why, should I pay someone to figure out what I should wear? That's the fun part. 
The floral Alexander McQueen and later Louis Vuitton outfit sparked controversy on the internet and ultimately led to Timothy being honored by GQ magazine as one of the best-dressed men in the world. Timothy participated in the film A Rainy Day in New York, directed by Woody Allen, but this film did not achieve significant success due to the scandal associated with Woody Allen. The cast, including Timothy, refused to accept their salaries and donated the entire amount owed to fund supporting women subjected to violence. Although the film was not successful on the social and critical front, Timothy was still recognized for his excellent acting in the project. Experiencing fame sometimes comes with responsibilities and pressures, not only for projects but also in relationships with friends and colleagues. In 2019, Timothy Chalamet played Laurie in the film Little Women, an adaptation of the novel by Louisa May Alcott, directed by Greta Gerwig. Greta Gerwig and Timothy Chalamet had the opportunity to work together previously in Lady Bird, and Timothy was delighted to work with her again. Chalamet happily agreed, would work with Greta on anything. I completely admire her. I like working with filmmakers who are ten times smarter than me. Timothy also shared that he prefers working with independent filmmakers rather than large studios. This allows him the freedom to participate in projects that he believes are important. Greta really wanted genuine chemistry between the characters, so she invited Saoirse Ronan from Lady Bird to play Joe, Laurie's love interest. Laurie decides to confess his feelings to Joe very sincerely. Their performance was so good that it was considered one of Greta's favorite scenes in her entire career. This was the seventh film adaptation of the book, but Gerwig was still able to breathe new life into the classic novel without harming its storyline. The efforts of her and the entire crew, including Chalamet, were highly praised by critics. The film received six Oscar nominations. Timothy continued his career with the role of Henry V in the film, The King, 2019. Director David Mikad really wanted to cast Chalamet in his film and wasn't at all embarrassed that the King of England would be played by a relatively young actor. This pretty boy role stood out significantly compared to the characters he had played previously. Therefore, Timothy immediately agreed and began preparations, learning horseback riding and sword fighting. However, he lacked knowledge about Henry V, so he had to read a lot of books. Nonetheless, the film received mixed reviews. Many criticized Mikad's vision, and the film was deemed historically inaccurate due to the lack of Shakespearean text and Middle English. Timothy's performance also faced criticism. Screen Daily commented that the actor did not have enough variety in facial expressions and voice tones to really bring the character to life. Chalamet's quietly spectacular performance in such a cold film makes his King Henry all the more compelling. He is adept at traversing the full spectrum of human emotion, but all he needs in the King is a constant scowl and a furrowed brow. Iana Murray wrote about Timothy in GQ magazine. Meanwhile, on aggregate sites, the film received generally positive reviews. That same year, Timothy shone on stage with Kid Cudi, where he introduced his album at the Complex Con Festival. This wasn't a surprise, as he and Chalamet are friends. But it was an exciting surprise for the audience. In 2021, Timothy landed one of the lead roles in Wes Anderson's The French Dispatch. He played a talented chess player and the leader of the French student revolution. The cast was incredibly impressive. But what else would you expect from Wes Anderson? The film featured Bill Murray, Benicio del Toro, Willem Dafoe, and Adrian Brody, including Timothy's friend Saoirse Ronan. Chalamet was very inspired by this opportunity. He was a fan of Anderson's earlier works like The Grand Budapest Hotel and was ready to play any part, no matter how big. He shared, just having the opportunity to be in Wes's film meant a lot to me. It's an honor to be filmed by him, to live in the world that he has invented. A few weeks before shooting began, Chalamet received a letter from the director, which read, Over the years, I have more than once invited young actors, and there have been cases where they refused, did not show up, or were not prepared, 
Timothy admitted he took these words very seriously and tried his best not to be the black sheep, not to let the team down professionally. He meticulously studied his lines. The film is a collection of incredible stories from a 20th century American newspaper. For Timothy, working on The French Dispatch felt liberating. I felt free, no tension, nobody standing behind your back or pushing you, he recalled. The atmosphere was very trusting and calm. Yet, the antics of Bill Murray brought some flies in the ointment. Nobody wanted to nitpick at him, Chalamet remembered. The film generally received positive reviews and grossed $46 million against a $25 million budget. Timothy's next role in Dune could be called one of the most significant in his career. In this film, he played the lead character, Paul Atreides, in the adaptation of Frank Herbert's novel. Dune was undoubtedly the biggest film in Chalamet's career to date. A true blockbuster with stunning graphics, special effects, sets, and costumes, Tim had the opportunity to work with Javier Bardem, Zendaya, Jason Momoa, Rebecca Ferguson, Oscar Isaac, and many others. Denis Villeneuve couldn't see anyone else as the lead other than Timothy. He was the first and only choice. I felt that right now on this planet, there's one being that has the ability to portray Paul Atreides. But such scale also created a sense of pressure for Timothy, who realized the project's importance for his career, Dune is a dream film based on absolute creation. That's how I treat it and my role. And I stayed away from everything else. When Villeneuve invited him to a meeting a few years ago, Tim had only read half of the novel and was finalizing his preparations for The King. Just a year earlier, Timothy had nothing, living with friends and not anticipating such luck. What attracted him to the character was the idea of a boy becoming a leader. What was important to me was understanding how such a young man deals with the tremendous burden he carries, a supernatural gift and a mission entrusted to save the world, he said. The futuristic landscapes, science fiction details from the source material like force shields for battles, spectacular visual imagery, and well-choreographed battle scenes, all ensured success for Villeneuve's work. The film set box office records in Europe, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Timothy shared, to put it simply, this is a once-in-a-lifetime honor for me. Of course, in some respects, I had to be guided and directed, during this five or six months of filming, I received emotional support from all the people and actors I was fortunate enough to work alongside. His journey from having very little to starring in a major blockbuster reflects the significant leap his career took with Dune, highlighting not just his talent but also his dedication and the impact of the support system around him. Villeneuve was quite pleased with his collaboration with Chalamet, he has a deep, profound intelligence in his eyes. Something you can't fake. The kid is truly exceptional. Very intelligent, very strong. And you see that through his eyes. After participating in Dune, Time magazine recognized Timothy as the most recognizable face of his generation. Timothy has broken the mold of the standard, outdated masculine archetype. His acting style is often described as androgynous, and he has shown a sensitive, emotionally rich approach to portraying the humanity of a man. Villeneuve commented, Timothy is a profound and poetic person. I am always struck by his beautifully vulnerable demeanor. Seeing himself as the most promising representative of his generation is something alien to Timothy, I'm just an actor, he often says, just an actor. Right after Dune, he was involved in Adam McKay's new project, Don't Look Up, starring alongside Leonardo DiCaprio. For Timothy, DiCaprio is an ideal role model, and this opportunity was a tremendous reward. In it, Timothy played a controversial role, a young thief and rebel named Yule, who is also the boyfriend of the main character. McKay shared that his plan was to create a film where ridiculous humor, absurdity mixed with sadness, in a world that becomes more surreal every year. This time, Chalamet was offered a role that at first glance didn't seem very clear, a character with a faith of sorts. I talked to Chalamet about doing this small part because we wanted to work together, McKay shared. 
But Mackay had faith in Timothy. I know who Timothy's character is, he said, indicating his confidence in the actor's ability to bring the role to life. The film had a limited release in 2021 but was soon available on Netflix. Despite mixed reviews, Don't Look Up received four Oscar nominations, including Best Picture, and became the second most-watched movie on Netflix. Timothy's performance was highly praised. Maybe it's the terrible wig, but ultimately, Chalamet looks like he's playing someone other than himself. Perhaps this ambiguity is a strength for his character, after all, Magdalene Taylor, a staff writer at MEL, wrote about Timothy. The following year, Chalamet collaborated again with Luca Guadagnino in the romantic horror film Bones and All, where the actor took on a leading role. The plot, based on the book by Camille DeAngelis, tells the story of the love between two cannibals, Louis and Marin. In an interview with Deadline, Luca shared, it's a romantic story about the impossibility of love and yet, the necessity of it, even under the most harsh circumstances. After reading the script, Luca immediately thought of Timothy, acknowledging his unique ability to bring complex characters to life. Chalamet not only agreed to star in Bones and All, but also tried his hand at being a producer for the film. The actor admitted he was very excited, it's very different from the first project we did together. Bones and All was a resounding success. During its premiere at the Venice Film Festival, the film received a 10-minute standing ovation. Peter Bradshaw of The Guardian called the film crazy and excessive, scary, uncomfortable, and startling in its twisted romanticism and gave it five stars. In 2023, news spread across the media, Timothy Chalamet became the face of Chanel's new Blue de Fragrance. He also planned to make a short film for Blue de Chanel with Martin Scorsese. I'm at a point in my career where I can choose projects that touch my heart. And if it feels like all the pieces are falling into the right place, then there are no questions to be asked," he said. This statement reflects his careful consideration and passion for the projects he chooses, indicating a maturity and depth in his approach to his career and artistic endeavors. In 2021, it was revealed that Chalamet would captivate fans with a new and standout role, a young Willy Wonka. Director Paul King built a literal dance floor at Leaves Den. And then I immediately started to learn to sing and dance at Leaves Den, to take on the role of Roald Dahl's Willy Wonka, which was great because I was going from playing a cannibalistic citizen-deprived character in the outskirts of American society in the 80s to playing a talented young chocolate maker, Timothy recalled. Chalamet truly dedicated himself to the role. I felt like a fish out of water, he said while working on the film, like I was offending history. But at the same time, the actor was delighted to portray himself in such a new and unique image, being part of a product that's not skeptical about its young audience, that's really exciting. That's why I was drawn to it. In a time and political atmosphere that's tense, where there's always too much bad news, hopefully, this will be a piece of chocolate. Timothy became an internet sensation, mesmerizing hearts. He has been called the new Brando or new DiCaprio and is just over 18 years old. Chalamet continues to reach new heights. The future holds the sequel to Dune and a new Bob Dylan biographical film, Going Electric, directed by James Mangold. Since the production start was announced two years ago, its preparation process has been halted. This reflects Timothy's versatility and willingness to take on diverse and challenging roles in his career, further solidifying his status as a prominent actor in Hollywood. As Chalamet shared, I've never stopped preparing, it's one of the greatest gifts to me. It's a wonderful experience to immerse yourself in that world, whether we succeed or not. But I'm not giving up anything, because I don't want to beat anyone, and obviously, everything has to come together officially, the winds are blowing in a very positive direction. Timothy admits that he admires Dylan and how the artist can appear so frequently. Chalamet's future, like the present, will continue to shine brightly and brilliantly. So, Leonardo DiCaprio has offered advice to the ambitious young actor, something he has mentioned many times in various interviews, no drugs, no superhero movies. 
It seems that Chalamet is following the advice of his senior. This reflects his commitment to his craft and his desire to take on meaningful and challenging roles in the film industry. The actor is not fond of discussing his personal life, but paparazzi have caught him in the company of Madonna's daughter, Lourdes, Johnny Depp and Vanessa Paradis' daughter, Lily Rose Depp, actress Isa Gonzalez, and Kylie Jenner. After starring in Woody Allen's film, there were rumors of Chalamet having an affair with Selena Gomez. However, neither of the actors confirmed anything. In October 2018, Timothy was spotted having a romantic stroll in New York with Lily Rose Depp. The couple kissed, held hands, and showed their affection openly. They met on the set of The King, where Lily played Chalamet's wife. He recalls that Lily often worried about her high forehead and would ask him if she looked okay. She looked like a queen, he realized that he was in love. This relationship lasted for over a year. In April, Us Weekly reported that they had broken up. In an interview, Chalamet admitted that the paparazzi were largely responsible for this, the reporters started hunting us down. It's surprising that Lily and I managed to keep our relationship hidden for so long. As soon as we stopped avoiding, we found ourselves unable to protect ourselves from the paparazzi and the constant intrusive attention of the media on us. And it all came to an end. He could be called romantic, Chalamet said. All of us live for love, and it's love that allows us to endure for so long. However, he tries to keep his love life experiences secret, especially after the incidents with paparazzi during his relationship with Lily Rose. Chalamet also admits that he's not a fan of social media. He doesn't have any specific hobbies either. I can't even imagine what I would do if I weren't acting on stage or in films. I devote almost all my time and energy to shaping characters. He adds, I'm one of those people who live in the present, but at the same time, I've gone through very painful breakups. The hearts of celebrities are not free for long. After breaking up with Lily, Timothy quickly found actress Isa Gonzalez, the star of Hobbs and Shaw. She is six years older than Timothy. In June 2020, the couple was spotted in Mexico, at the Cabo San Lucas Resort. Their summer romance ended when autumn came. After that, Timothy tried to keep this relationship private. In an interview in 2021, he said he has someone to dream about. At the same time, he denied any rumors about a relationship with Saoirse Ronan. Both actors are sure they are just friends. The friendship between us is truly magical, Timothy said. I feel comfortable and good when I'm with her, and we are definitely going to get married when we're 40. Although there is no romantic relationship, Saoirse highly praises Timothy. She said, he has had incredible opportunities, and he doesn't take that reality for granted. He is extremely charming and appreciative of his work and the people he works with. In April 2023, rumors surfaced that he was dating Kylie Jenner, a member of the famous Kardashian-Jenner family. They were seen at the US Open Men's Finals, New York Fashion Week, and Beyonce's concert. The extent and seriousness of Timothy's relationship with Kylie Jenner remain unclear and how long it lasted. What lies ahead for Timothy? Surely, he can continue to surprise us with his unique roles and the scale of his future projects. I hate to say this, but an artist's dream is to throw anything you want at the wall, you know? And I guess what I'm realizing is that a person's personal life, a person's adult life, can be quite boring, and an artist's life can still be quite extraordinary. And we will strive to keep you amazed and intrigued with new exciting videos. You can click on the icons appearing on the screen to learn about the lives and bright careers of other famous actors. If you enjoyed watching Timothy Chalamet's story, please like and leave a comment below this video. See you again on The Famous People channel.